Hey everyone, it's me, Cynthia. Some of you know me as Mama Mess. And today I'm gonna to share with you how I made this mermaid tail pendant. So I'm really excited to share it with you. And I'll put all of the tools and materials that you need in the information box below. Let's get started. So I'm going to start by making the backing for our mermaid pendant. And I have some of the pistachio here rolled out on number three on my pasta machine. Um, the thickest setting on my pasta machine is number one and the thinnest is number nine. So this is a little less than halfway. And I have a texture sheet here um, and I've sprayed a little bit of water on that texture sheet as a release to make sure the clay doesn't stick. Um, I happen to have a texture sheet that looks like fish scales. I thought that went well with um, our mermaid theme, but you can use any texture sheet that you'd like. So I'm just going to put the clay on there and I'm going to press it down. This is my preferred method for getting um, texture on clay. Some people um, just roll over it but I find that if I press down and then roll over it, I tend to get um, more even texture. When you press down, you can actually see the texture come through. There you go. And now I'm going to take my roller and just roll away from myself just one time because I don't want to get uh, double double textures. And now I can remove. You can see that beautiful texture in there. And I'm going to put it on my tile with the patty paper, texture side down. Okay, so that's the backing uh, for the mermaid pendant. And uh, when I come back, we'll make some blends for the pendant. Now I'm going to make some mini blends for the mermaid pendant. For the tail, I'm going to use pistachio and igloo. And for the body of the mermaid or the tail of the mermaid, I'm going to use the igloo, pistachio, jade, and sea glass. Now I do have a video here on YouTube where I show how I make these blends, but I'll just go through it quickly with you now. So I have, um, you know, the Sculpey Cabochon mold and I'm using the largest triangle and I just am pushing the clay that I'd like to use in there um, and, and getting triangles of clay. I do that, you know, when I just want a little bit of a blend, this is how I do it. And um, now, once I've got that, once I've got my triangles, I just go ahead and kind of roll it out to the point where it can fit through uh, the largest setting on the pasta machine. And I'll do that now, put it right through. And then I'm going to fold it and I'm always going to fold it the same way. I'm going to put the green to the green and the white to the white and I'm going to keep putting it through the pasta machine fold side down. So I'm going to go ahead and um, complete these mini blends and um, then when I come back we'll uh, make the actual mermaid tail. As you can see here, um, I did complete the blends. I don't have them perfectly blended. I um, don't actually want that for this project. But now that I do have these blends made, I'm gonna go ahead and put them aside and I'm going to make the actual tail. So once again, we have our trusty old Sculpey Cabochon mold. And um, for this particular mermaid tail, I'm going to start with the um, 
medium size teardrop mold. I'm also going to use the small one. And uh, you could actually use scrap clay for this part. I'm going to go ahead and use some of the jade clay. I'm going to make sure that, you know, it's pretty conditioned. make a ball and I do you know want to make sure that that ball is smooth I don't want any wrinkles or anything on the part of the ball that I'm going to just go ahead and push into that mold that medium sized mold um, I usually use a clay scraper and not a blade to take off the excess clay um, it just prevents you from accidentally cutting your mold you can pop that out I'm going to put a little bit more cornstarch in there as a release. And once again, just push it right into the mold and take off the excess if you get a little drag like that usually what it means is that you need to clean off the scraper push it back in there pop that one out so we've got two medium sized teardrops and now I'm going to go ahead and mold the smallest teardrop. I'm getting a little bit of transfer onto my fingers here. And that should pop out pretty easily. We'll clean up some of these little clay scraps. Okay. Now I have a, a wooden skewer here, skewer, and I'm going to cut it so that it is only oh two or three inches long. There we go. And I'm going to take one of the larger teardrops and I'm going to go ahead and shape it right over that skewer And that's where we're going to be able to run our leather cord or chain through is the little opening that we're making with this skewer. And I'm going to go ahead and take the second teardrop shape and I'm going to push it right, right onto the, the first one. And then finally, you can put the smaller one. Now you could start with the with the larger of the teardrop shapes, or you can you can do uh, you can start with the um, smallest of the teardrop shapes. It, it's all up to you. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some time to roll out these lines. And to make sure that these are all well attached to one another. We are going to be putting a veneer over this and we are going to be putting a backing on it. 
So that helps to make sure that everything is all stuck together too. But I just want to get any, you know, sort of obvious lines out of it because that, that might show through the veneer. And I just take my time. And I'm just uh, using one of the etch and pearl tools. I'm also going to use my fingers to get this, you know, as smooth as I can. Okay. Just keep working on it. Just get it to the shape that I'd like. A little bulky up here. And you can pick it up to work on it. But as I said, I'm, I'm also going to take care, um, this is just a double-sided knitting needle. And I'm going to use that to kind of smooth it out. It will, again, it will be covered with a veneer, but, um, you know, we don't want it to be too lumpy and bumpy. Often just dip my finger in a little cornstarch and go ahead and smooth out some more. And the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look, you know, at the line. Line is an important design element. And uh, line is what helps, is one of the things that, you know, helps the eye move around a piece. So if this is coming just straight up and down, the line isn't as interesting as it will, will be if we put some curves. And so that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to put some curves into the tail. It doesn't have to be anything too dramatic, um, but just a little bit of curve in there is more interesting than if you just have the tail go straight up and down. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to carefully pick up my tail and I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, liquid Sculpey or bacon bond on the back of the tail. You don't need too much. And I'm going to go ahead and spread that out. This is just to help the two pieces stick together. And I'm going to go ahead and put the tail down on the backing that I made earlier. 
and a little bit of baking bond leak out there. And then I'm going to use um, a craft knife to go ahead and uh, trim around the backing. You want to try to keep your craft knife straight up and down when you do this. If your craft knife is tilted this way or this way, then you'll undercut. Um, and that's just not as attractive looking as if you can keep your craft knife uh, nice and straight. We'll get the top here cut out. Move that out of our way. And again, I'm just going to carefully pick this up and on the back here, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the clay that was around the skewers. You just might find a place here or there where you want to trim it just a little bit more. Okay. All right. Now that we've got that done, we're going to go ahead um, and make a scale veneer and then a tail for our pendant. So I'll be back in just a minute and we'll get that done. So I've got um, a small piece of clay here that I rolled out. It's uh, some of the pistachio and I rolled it out on a number seven on my pasta machine. And again, my pasta machine goes from one to nine, one being the thickest, nine being the thinnest. So this is pretty thin. And I've got the blend that I made earlier. Now, the mini blend. Now, when I was blending this, I was folding the clay this way, right? I was matching the dark color to the dark and the light to the light. What I'm going to do now is put the blend through the machine this way and I'm going to get it nice and thin. I'm going to go ahead and start at a three. Let me see that stretches it out a bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm putting it through at a six. And as you can see, that stretched it out quite a bit more. So now um, I have my blend all thinned out. And um, I'm going to use the etch and pearl tool to uh, make a scale veneer. Now I talked a little bit before when we were making uh, the the actual tail about how um, we wanted to pay attention to the line because the line helps with movement and movement adds interest. So we're going to also take advantage of um, this Skinner blend. You know the the uh, gradation of color also um, gives the illusion of movement. And on my mermaids, I like for the darkest color to be at the bottom of the tail and the lighter colors to be um, at the top. So I'm 
using the uh, medium etch and pearl tool here and I'm going to start down here where it's nice and dark and I'll push that into the Skinner blend and pop it right down and for my uh, first row I'm probably going to go oh I would say um, seven across and that's probably going to be plenty wide to go around the mermaid so I have one two three four five And every now and then this happens sometimes it does get stuck in the etch and pearl tool so let's see what do we have here one two three four five let's see if we can do it with five and so that will be our first row and um, I'll do one more row of pretty dark and what I do for the second row is I don't go right on top of the scale I made before I go in between two scales and it's uh you know I don't try to get it perfect we we're, we're gonna flatten this veneer out when we're finished so it doesn't have to be perfect so my first row here was one two three four five across and so your second row winds up being four across. Now I'm going to go up to where it's a little bit lighter because again I want to take advantage of that gradation. Tool makes it pretty easy. I'll go right here. And we'll do just one more row so I can show you how pretty it gets to be with the nice gradation of color. And again, you know, one of the nice things about this veneer is you really don't have to be placing things perfectly. And we'll do just one more. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish placing down um, all of these scales with the Etch and Pearl tool. And when I'm finished, um, I'll come back and show you how um, we flatten the veneer out and put the veneer onto the pendant. Okay, so I went ahead and I used the Etch and Pearl tool to apply these little scales on a piece of clay. And I started with a darkest part of the blend and I worked my way up to the lighter part of the blend and now um, what I like to do is flatten the veneer out a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through the pasta machine and the first time I put it through the pasta machine I'm going to go lengthwise Just a So I put it through the machine at the thickest setting lengthwise and now I'm going to uh, you know move the dial up and I'm going to put it through widthwise. wise 
and that was at a number three so that's about it's a little less than halfway now I'm going to go ahead again and I put it through lengthwise again on uh, number five And I'm going to put it through one more time widthwise on a number six or seven. It, it sort of depends. I'm going to start with the six. And I think that six is good. All the scales are flat. I have a nice flat veneer. And this is just... Um, what I've come to like. I, I don't like little tiny small um, scales. I, I, I like this look where the scales are kind of just flattened out and um, you know kind of wide looking. Let me move some stuff out of the way here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, you can use either uh, Bacon Bond or Translucent Sculpey and I'm going to put a little bit of that on the tail that we made earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and just, I can even pick that up if I want to. I'm just going to spread that all the way around the tail. just so that it adheres well for us. And then, you know, you pick your veneer up and you say, hmm, do I want, I want a little bit more of this dark showing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have the dark. And then once again, I'm going to take a craft knife and just start trimming around the, around the tail shape. Let me just make sure it's all adhered. do this you want to just do your best to keep your blade straight up and down We'll trim over where the dowel is. Trim around the top. I'm going to carefully pick it up and just make sure it's all well adhered. and that we've covered over the uh, body of the tail that we made with the veneer. Get it so, get it nice and neat. Okay. 
Okay, so, and again, we've, uh, you know, I just happen to like a, a kind of a more subtle uh, scale look. Okay, well, I think that that looks good. And uh, now what I'm going to do is um, just finish sort of neatening things up here a little bit. And when I come back, we'll go ahead and um, make some fins for the tail. All right, now I've got the blend that I made for the tail fin. And again, originally I was folding this way you know, ma matching the darker color to the darker color, lighter color to the lighter color, and putting it through the machine that way. But I want to lengthen it and thin it a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through the machine this way. So this is the thickest setting right now. And what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and put it through um, on setting three, a little, a little less than half on my machine. That's on setting three. Now I'm going to move up to setting five. And that's what it looks like on setting five. And now I'm going to take um, a leaf cutter. This is um, the smallest leaf cutter in my leaf cutter sets. And I'm going to just try to capture some of the light and some of the dark. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that again. And so those are going to become the tail fins. Now once I got them cut out, I'm going to take the thinnest of the uh, etch and pearl tools and I'm going to drag that sort of right down the center and then I'm going to just keep dragging that to the sides and I'm going to do the same this way just drag it a little bit I'm going to do the same to this one I start in the center and drag it and then just go right across the shape, just dragging it through. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my fingers on the edge to just thin the edge out a little bit. I'll do the same to this one, just a little bit, thin it out, and then I'm going to just sort of decide where I want that, where I want them on, on the tail, how I'd like them to be. I'm going to thin out the top here a little bit. And then out the top on this one. And then I'm going to pinch the top together. They're sticking to me. Pinch the top together on this one. And that's going to give me sort of little tabs that I'm able to attach 
to the tail. And I'm going to use just a tiny bit of liquid clay on each one. I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the excess. Go ahead and put that on there. And we're going to do the same with this one. I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. And then I'm going to take a tool. This is the Etch and Pearl tool. And I'm just going to roll this. We'll neaten that out a little bit. Okay. And then um, you can go ahead and add one or two more fins if you'd like to. Or you can leave it just like this. For this one, I think I'm going to uh, go ahead and add at least one more fin. If you'd like, you can even cut one fin in half. Go ahead and make some lines. Just use my fingers to thin out the edges. Use my finger to thin out the top. Pinch the top together. Sort of figure out where I'd like that. I have a little bit of liquid clay left here that I can put on it. Go ahead and add that. And then roll it just a little bit. One to make sure it's attached. And um, two to make it look like it's um, all one piece. And at this point, you can, um, you know, play with these a little bit. just to get them to where you think they're pretty. That's all about what you want. And now I'm just using the Etch and Pearl tool to sort of drag at the ends I just like the way that looks. I think it makes it uh, look more like uh, the fins and the tail are, you know, one piece. I'm going to do that with this one down here.
and I sort of like it when they're laying on their sides a little bit again it gives it I'm just trying to give it a little bit more movement rather than having flat tail you know flat fins just a little bit more over here okay well I'm going to um, continue to play around with my tail here a little bit <laughs> and um, then I'm going to take you know a, a, some baby oil on a brush or some baby wipes and I'm just going to make sure that I have all of my uh, fingerprints and so on out of this and uh, then I'll cure it and when I come back we'll add the grommets and um, a leather cord all right so now um, the piece is completely cured and I've removed the um, little skewer that we had in there and I'm going to go ahead and take a small hand vise and I always start with the very smallest one no matter what it looks like to me I'll start with the smallest one and all I'm going to do is just get the um, the channel even the you know the channel that we created with the skewer even and get the holes about the same size on both sides now this looks good to me but you know if it was necessary I could go to the next largest size drill go ahead and put that one away and now I've got these little um, I call them grommets um, and I got them in the scrapbooking section of the craft store and I'm going to go ahead and glue those on either side I've got some um, gel crazy glue here and hopefully I can do this on camera without gluing my fingers to anything that's always a little dicey Those very small pieces that we have here and I'm going to go ahead and put some on the grommets and some right around the hole then I'm going to go ahead and get that pushed in there and again hopefully that's without gluing any fingers or anything important I'll go ahead over to the other side here and I'm going to do the same thing get a little bit of the gel glue on the grommet itself and a little bit around the hole where the grommet's going to go a little bit more and I'm going to go ahead and push it in Oop hopefully push it in on that side and that just gives it you know more of a finished look instead of just having two holes on either side of um, the mermaid tail you've got you know some nice neat little grommets in there and they hold pretty well with the um, with the super glue there the gel glue now oftentimes I'll make these tails using um, you know a pearlized clay I mean this time I chose not to um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to add um, a gloss varnish with a little bit of glitter in it so let me just pour some in here and I happen to be using um, Varthane Barthane um, Diamond Ultimate it says on it and I like this um, varnish a lot it is um, self leveling and then I just have a little bit of uh, glitter here and how much or how little you put in is really kind of a personal choice 
I sort of feel like you can't have too much glitter when it comes to mermaids and little girls. And I just go ahead and mix that in. And this is just um, the neatest way that I have found to use, use glitter. As you can see, even doing this, some of the glitter has just uh, gotten all over the desk here. <laughs> Mm. I'm using um, a, a soft brush and what I do, oh, that was a little bit of a spill there, is I use almost a padding motion. And that seems to stop it from getting um, ear bubbles in it. You know, I'm not doing big long strokes, you know, like that, um, because that does leave a lot of streaks that you can see. But this kind of padding motion, um, seems to go on, you know, without the air bubbles and without all the streaks. And how many coats you put on is up to you. I generally do, you know, anywhere from two to eight coats. And it really just depends. And this um, glitter that I used is a, is a fine glitter. And the more the var thing dries, the more the glitter shows. But I have found that that, you know, the trick to, um, you know, using a, a gloss coat on polymer clay is a very soft brush and this sort of padding motion. And, you know, a, a, a good gloss coat that, um, if it has a self-leveling characteristic to it, it's really great. All right, now... I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and let it get all nice and shiny and glittery. Um, and uh, then I'll come back and show you the finished product. Thanks for watching and I hope you found the video helpful. If you'd like to support us, then please hit like and subscribe below. Please follow us on Facebook and visit us on www.completeanothermess.